those are special moments uh, when we get to come again live to the screen and uh, give you a compilation of the things that might have happened in our country, Zambia. Remember that the crusade for a better Zambia it doesn't seem to end anytime soon. That's the reason why, as a movie television, we continue to bring different faces who can be able to add or contribute to the governance of this country. And of course, today we decided to take a little bit a different angle with regards to the guest, and we brought in a person now coming from the uh, industry of activism. Now, this is a person who has been in this country. This is a person who has been in the music industry for so many years, or I should call him a pioneer of Zambian music. He used music at a point to advance or advocate for a better country, but at some point he decided to go direct and begins to advocate for that which he feels that is right or is better for our country. And now he's fully involved in the works of activism. That's the reason why this evening we'll be looking at activism versus politics. Let's find out. My guest on the program is Michael Zulu, coming in now after a long time. Or well, Some of you remember there was a time when he, alongside others, decided to go and hide in the bush to protest. Finally, let's hear what is available now and how he feels that now is, able, is, is in, in a new administration. Follow us in the conversation, remember, you can uh, catch us on social media page, ask a movie, give us those questions. No matter how irritating they can be, we'll be able to forward them to our guest. And also for those that are watching us uh, using a top star decoder, go to channel 104. You'll be able to follow uh, this uh, conversation. Mr. Zulu, welcome to this uh, program. Thank you so much, uh, IP. I'm humbled and uh, good evening, viewers. Fantastic. It's been quite long since uh, you, uh, you sat on this platform, and uh, I welcome you to this, uh, uh, the assignment in the, under the new dawn. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and my question about. now will be on the, the journey you've embarked on. The journey not really easy, but very difficult, and you decided just to stick to it, that of uh, activism. The last time I saw you, you were in the bush, that was about maybe six months ago, protesting alongside your colleagues. How do you feel now? Uh, can you protest anywhere, anytime? Well, I suppose uh, <coughs> if there is need to protest, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that uh, the laws uh, uh, or the game has really changed mm. uh, and uh, I'm sure people are free to protest mm. because uh, from my understanding I think uh, uh, the, the president of the republic mm. uh, rightly said that, that uh, people are going to have their freedoms and so in uh, guaranteeing those freedoms mm. I don't see why uh, there should be any hindrance to uh, protest mm. uh, as long as it's done lawfully Mm. And, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, it's done uh, following the, if uh, like now with the COVID guidelines and things like that, all things that come with uh, uh, a, a, a particular kind of protest, because mm. sometimes it's people protest as uh, individuals, yeah. sometimes as groups, mm. and, you know, there is uh, also the online platform now mm. where people can, can protest also. So uh, I want to believe that uh, 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 there are freedoms that have been guaranteed. Mm. Yes, we are, we are yet, we are yet to, 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 to see. All right. What is it that you were fighting for? What is it that took you into the bush alongside Biflo and other Zambian artists or alongside other Zambian activists? Well, that particular uh, uh, protest was about uh, uh, issues to do with young people. Mm. 
as you know, uh, every country, you know, whatever country you look at now, and uh, Zambia specifically, the engine of the country is young people. And so uh, we felt that issues of young people were not being adequately uh, uh, tackled by uh, the authorities. Mm. And so you found that uh, we were going to a point where our young people became uh, political tools, mm. our young people became uh, examples of unruliness, mm. of disorder, mm. you know, our young people became an example of intoxication, mm. you know, just social disorder. And so when we analyzed what was uh, going on, mm. we thought that young people needed more opportunities mm. in uh, all sectors, education, mm. uh, technology, you know, uh, in the economy, in mm. entrepreneurship. And so that was the main reason why we protested. Mm. And uh, ironically, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, not a secret that uh, there were quite a lot of threats mm. and intimidation, you know, uh, from the highest levels of mm. government, you know. But uh, that aside, I think uh, young people... Uh, need more opportunities in our country mm. because uh, if we take care of young people today mm. we are taking care of the next uh, generation say mm. of retirees you and I once we retire yeah. you know it's the young people that have to take over mm. so if we leave a gap where young people are concerned mm. in as far as carrying them uh, with us mm. in terms of human uh, and economic development, mm. then you know we'll be missing a point. So basically that is why we went to protest and also uh, to, you know, to send a message mm. because when we wanted to protest, yeah. you know, we were threatened, yeah. you know, so we thought, you know, for change to happen, you know, some people have to risk their lives. Right. And so that is just what we were doing. Mm. We said, I mean, if uh, these people are going to break the bonds of people, yeah. let them break the bonds of a few people rather than, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the young people out there because we need the young people out there. So basically that was uh, uh, the purpose, the so purpose yes. Mm -hmm. Which one have you achieved so far? Uh, you talked about uh, the needs of young people, uh, young people were yearning for jobs, young people uh, were, were yearning for a freedom of speech, freedom mm. of expression, mm. you know, good governance in general. Which one have you achieved? Well, activism, achievement in activism comes in many ways, yeah. you know, uh, you are not always successful, but uh, already we can point to uh, the mere fact that uh, the 2021, the August 2021 election mm. was determined by young people, mm. you know, because, you know, young people understood that, uh, you know, the country was being driven mm. in uh, the wrong direction, so to say, mm. you know, and uh, something needed to be done. And if young people did not come out to vote, mm. you know, perhaps would have been talking of other things now, but the young people made their resolve. So uh, for, for, for me and uh, for and, uh, 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 my colleagues, I'm sure, uh, not that I have to speak for them, you know, but uh, I want to believe that uh, uh, the participation of young people in the governance of their country is very, very cardinal because that's the beginning then uh, now we can look at other things, you know, like the involvement, the actual involvement. Mm. You know, what is the share uh, of, uh, what is the, the size of the piece of the cake for young people? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Because, uh, you know, the young people are able to sustain this country yeah. in terms of industry, in terms, uh, once you give them the right jobs, mm. you know, so 
we are waiting to see the cake that belongs to young people still. Mm. Mm. I believe that uh, uh, having advocated for the young people to participate into the last or the just ended general election for me was not enough. I want to, to believe so. Uh, there could be some of the pertinent issues or you know, um, goals that you want to, to achieve exactly. or that you want to see being actualized by the new administration. What are those, if you can pinpoint one or two things that you think that young people really, having mingled with a lot of young people and uh, also you being a musician, a veteran musician in this country? Uh, IP, you know, the issues that need to be done, first of all, uh, and uh, we need to put this straight and on record because uh, we might again mislead the young people to think that uh, now, you know, uh, it's a takeover time and things like that, you know. Uh, what needs to be done should be, first of all, for the benefit of every citizen, young and old. You know, you saw how our retirees were being... Uh, ignored yeah. by the previous administration where a minister would actually walk majestically mm -hmm. in front of weeping uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, retired workers, you know. So when we, we take care of the country, mm -hmm. we need to take care of the country wholesomely. It's like a family. And so in saying so, there is a uh, First of all, obviously, the economy needs to, to be revamped right. because uh, that is the, the bread and butter for everybody. Mm. Right now, a welder is not making the money he's supposed to make mm. because, the, first of all, the price of the welding rods, the mm. price of the steel, it does not match, you know, with the, the, the money that he's supposed to charge. Mm. If he overcharges, you know, those uh, window frames will not sell. You know, so the economy is not uh, conducive right. for the simple people, mm. you know, because mm. at the end of the day, it's the simple people that drive this economy. Yeah. Okay. Of obviously, there is, uh, you know, uh, corporations and industry, you know, but all this involves individuals. And once these individuals come from home, they've eaten, you know, they're able to think properly on the job, you see. But if an individual is going for work, disgruntled, he doesn't know when he's going to get his salary, he's sick, you know, the children, you know, the bills are coming, like, you know, then, you know, you know, chilimba and things like that, you know. So that is the nature of our people, the dignity of our people is very, very low economically, and we need to uplift the dignity of our people economically. Mm. You know, and when you do that, you look at the health sector, okay, you need to make sure the people are healthy, mm. you know. You know, you, you do not want a government that is going to come and kill its people by giving them expired drugs, you know. So the game has to change in all levels, the education system. What are we teaching our, our children, you know? Our curricula, uh, you know, 19, you know, six, you know, it does not make sense, the current education uh, curricula, you know? They do not make sense because there is no life skills. You know, so in, in teaching a nation, you need to teach them life skills because you need life skills for you to survive, you know. Let me learn camera work, for example, in grade one, you know, because the jobs are in the studios now, you know, the jobs are at movie, you know, you need a technician behind, you know, you need a technician upstairs, you know, but most of these jobs are not formalized, you know, so that is another step. We need to create jobs, especially for young people. Like I said in the beginning, you know, we need to make the young people busy, you know, because they are productive. You know, let's move them from the streets, you know, from those low-paying uh, jobs, 
you know, if the guy is selling CDs for one kwacha on the market, mm. why don't you create an industry where the guy is going to sell his uh, merchandise at the airport? Mm. You know, Zambia is the only country that does not sell its music at the airport. You know, when you travel to these countries, you are able to buy a CD or two, you know, you know. So you need to create jobs for these young people. Mm. And so the new ministry in charge of entrepreneurship and mm. stuff, you know, the uh, small and me uh, medium scale businesses, mm. I think it has a lot to do in terms of creating jobs in the current uh, atmosphere, mm. you know, in the current conditions, mm. you know, because you don't want to create jobs of a typist, you know, sure. just because those are the jobs reflecting on the government, uh, <laughs> you know, the system. Yes. yes, we need to revamp our whole uh, system. Mm. And so, you know, uh, and when you talk of these things, they don't just matter for young people, but for the entire country. All right. Mm. You've mentioned something uh, that has caught my ears, and uh, that's the issue of uh, economic emancipation. Very cardinal, and that's very critical to all of us in this country, as well as the continent in general. But suffice to mention that um, this is one crusade we've had for quite some time now. I can take you back to the time of uh, uh, the late uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda. You know, this is a man who worked very hard. His agenda was to liberate or to achieve the economic aspect of this country, besides the political independence that we attained in 1964. For him, he really uh, contributed very hard. We saw those uh, drastic measures, actually, that were introduced by him or under his leadership, you know, such as uh, the leadership code, you know, type of governance where if you were a minister, uh, you cannot or you could, they could not buy expensive vehicles like you've just mentioned. You know, you, they couldn't buy maybe even a, a simple expensive television besides mm -hmm. you being uh, a minister. He was very strict. All those were stringent measures that he had put in place to ensure that the country is liberated uh, from the current economic wars that we are in. We moved away uh, again back into the MMD as well, uh, you know, where again even Mwanawasa tried by all means to put the pieces together. You know, besides that as well, I can take you to the African continent in general, the uh, structure adjustment programs that we've had in the 1980s about summer there. You know, all these efforts really, they don't seem to be giving us uh, profits or the fruits, the dividends that we require or we anticipated as a country. Where have we gone wrong as Zambia? It's a very simple answer, yeah. Comrade IP. It's leadership. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Zambia is not poor. Zambia's poverty is in leadership, or has been in leadership, you know, because we cannot uh, judge the current administration as yet, you know, but Zambia's poverty has been in leadership, you see. Uh, we can go back to the days of MMD itself, yes. you know. You saw how it was a trend, mm. you know, for, first of all, uh, corruption, mm. you know, for, you know, leaders to amass wealth. Yeah. Uh, in Not that, you know, first of all, let's mm. be very clear. Yeah. It's not, there is nothing wrong for me, mm. uh, for a leader, or somebody who is in government to do business, right. you know, there is something very, very wrong. Mm. For example, if I'm in government and I run my small roots cafe and then I use my position in government, right. you know, to benefit my business, right. then it becomes a problem. And that is where Kaunda had a problem, mm. you know. Right. But came, uh, come MMD, you know, then things changed, you know. And we saw even the prosecution of uh, Frederick Titus Jacob yeah. Chilua, yeah. you know, because, you know, leaders had reached a level where they were like mafias. Mm. They were dons, mm. you know. 
And this, unfortunately, continued, you know, to a point where everything now, uh, especially in the lat last administration, everything was centered around politics. Mm. You know, politics was your gateway to success, you know, not education. You know, so forget Rosia Siatwambo who mm. says education is the get, uh, gateway to success. Mm. You know, we threw away all those educationists. You know, we threw away engineers, you know, and we introduced <coughs> Kadarism and a kind of militant Kadarism, mm. you know, where, you know, a group of thugs mm. would, you know, disturb traffic, for example, on the way just because they are going for a meeting, you know, and they're insulting everybody. Mm. I remember at one time my wife was insulted by cadres who were going to the high court, mm. you know, and I said, you know, what, what is this country going into, you know, so we made a lot of mistakes. Right. I'm saying we because it's everybody's responsibility. Right. You know, we are not going to say, no, it's uh, Edgar Lungo and his team. We were all part of it. You know, first of all, we voted for those people in office. And, you know, we failed to stand up to them as citizens. You know, until, you know, we were pushed against the war. You know, citizens were quiet. You know, if you speak, you are opposition. If you speak, you are sponsored by external forces, you know, that is where we had reached. And so politicians mm. became very, very powerful, and particularly politicians in the ruling class, mm. you know. So there was uh, all these classes, maybe you and me, maybe in the middle class, low class, a bit of high class, mm. and now there was the political class, you know, a very, very dangerous class. Mm. And that is why you saw all this, you know, mess. First of all, our economy was crippled, mm. You know, the debt swallowed us. You know, we are swallowed in debt as we are speaking. And generations from now will have to suffer because of the actions of the people presently. Mm. You know, and that is why we say governance or authority should not be a career opportunity. You know, public service should never be a career opportunity. Don't go into public service because you are seeking a job. No. It's service, first of all. It's service. And that is why the Kaundas, they managed. Because they were not excited about the wealth. You know, it was there at their disposal. You know, it was there. And somebody was even laughing at his children to say, your father was in government. Why, you know, <laughs> yeah, why didn't you take advantage, you know? So leadership is the poverty that we have in this country. How uh, are we going to, or when, are we going to establish or to identify that leadership that we need to liberate our country? from the current economic wars that we are in uh, to a country that is going to be, uh, you know, safe for all of us economically. It's Remember a process. Remember the PF as mm. well. They told us under Felix Mtati when he yes. was the Minister of yes. Finance, you know, we are told you need to tighten your belts, you know, because as, a, as, 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 as government we want to ensure that we liberate, liberate rather, uh, this economy. But nothing transpired. We, 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 we had the issue of uh, economic recovery plans, mm. all those things. Mm. Nothing has given us the mm. dividends. Mm. When are we going to establish these or to identify these leaders? How long should it take yeah. us? It's a catch-22 question, uh, Comrade IP. Mm. Because, uh, first of all, uh, governance in itself is a process. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't happen like that. There are certain things that you do uh, whose dividends uh, may not be seen then, but uh, they would come later. Right. And even in the negative, uh, like we said, your actions today, yeah. you know, they may not show the damage that you are doing, you know, but come 20, 30 years from now, 
you know, you begin to see the damage that was caused by a certain ad administration. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I think as a country we need to begin to set benchmarks. Right. First of all, I want to believe that five years is enough for any administration to prove mm -hmm. that they are the perfect administration. You will never have the perfect administration, but they are the right administration. Mm -hmm. Five years is more than enough. Mm. Okay? So, as citizens, and that is why activism is going to play a very, very important role in this new era. You know, because we need to constantly remind each other, mm. you know, that uh, there is no time to waste in terms of, uh, in as far as leadership or leading a country is concerned. Mm. You know, and so the people that accept those public roles, those public servant roles, must be able to rise to the challenge, mm. you know. If it means you, you know, suspending uh, your small business for the benefit of your country, that is why, why you stood, you know. Mm. So, priority, first of all, must come to the country, especially where our leaders are concerned. Mm. Because, like I said, we've had leaders, people coming into leadership, with preconceived ideas, you know. They just want that land cruiser from Parliament, you know. Yes, believe me. And they are sleeping, they are drinking our water there, you know, using our power. The people are suffering without power and they are snoring in air conditions. You know, all that needs to stop because, you know, we've had passive leaders, you know, leaders who are not on the ground, you know, leaders were non-existent until the next election, you know. Leaders who put tinted windows on their vehicles, mm. you know. Why should we have those GRZ vehicles in uh, tint, mm. you know? Why, what are you fearing, you know? See. see what the people are doing, you know. Let them see you that you've passed and you've seen those potholes, mm. you know. So, uh, we have a job to do. Uh, comrade so but it's not just government's job right. you know all of us how are we doing business for example I'll give you an example I do a bit of business with a, 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 a company that is both Chinese and Zambian mm. you know so as an individual how am I you know doing my business yeah. are we doing straight business you know because people will be busy looking for corruption in government, mm. you know? What about, you know, in the private sector? Yeah. You know? What about in the NGOs? Is there no corruption in getting those contracts? Yeah. So it begins there. It begins, you know, from our markets. Mm. You know, how do you obtain your stand at the council? Mm. You know? Because our country has been toxic. Our systems have broken down. Mm. You know? Right now, it's probably time to mend these systems as quickly as possible, especially the public institutions, mm. the police, you know, ZRA, you know, uh, anti-corruption commission, mm. all these public institutions, the Auditor General, you know, you know, Financial Intelligence Center, all these critical institutions, they need to be mended as quickly as possible so that sanity comes back because then once you have the rule of law, mm. you know, then people are going to, you know, begin to, to be normal again, mm. you see. Only last night we lost lives, you know, on the road. Yeah. And uh, that's the road I use every day, you know, on the Great North Road because of lawlessness. Right. Yes, it's in the minds of the people. You know, you are driving and somebody throws a banana peels, it just comes and hits your screen, you know. So it's attitudes, you know, and these attitudes, they don't, <laughs> you don't find them in government, you know. You find them in communities, you know. You find them in schools, you know. You find them in public spaces. What is our attitude towards our country, towards public infrastructure, for example? You know? So, 
that is why I say we have a job as a country. However, you know, the bigger chunk of this job mm -hmm. lies on the people that we elected because you and I need to do other jobs, you know. We did not stand for elections for a purpose because we want to do our jobs, you know. But, you know, we expect that those people we gave authority to are going to represent us mm. to their utmost ability and are going to deliver because this country has money. Mm. Look at how much money is in people's suitcases, yeah. you know. And that's just one or two people, you know. What about those we don't know? Yeah. You know, those that were traveling with diplomatic passports, mm. you know, those that, those, that have, those that have immunity, yeah. you know. It's a, it's a mess. Mm. And, you know, people are suffering. You know, people, old ladies have to crush rock, you know, to make a living, you know, while people who are educated even, mm. you know, are using their education to steal from the people. That should never be allowed to happen, my brother. Mm. It should never. Mm. What signal would you send to our parliamentarians? You know, these are the people that uh, on a daily basis they sit to make laws, to debate, disagree, and disagree for the betterment of you and I, as well as the over 18 million Zambians that are watching this program right now. What kind of leadership are you expecting now uh, in that we've got a new administration? You did mention that something that you've been very against with is uh, having passive, that's the word you used, passive leaders, passive leaders. What kind of leadership or parliamentarians do you want to see going forward? First of all, I think the job of a parliamentarian needs to be, to be understood mm. because when you go back to the campaigns of these parliamentarians, you know, most of them understand their role. And so they campaigned on the basis of other things to say, I'm going to bring a road for you, I'm going to, you know. So once we begin to understand the role of a parliamentarian, both the citizens and the parliamentarians themselves, then that is the first step. Because also citizens don't seem to understand the job of their parliamentarians, which is very dangerous. Because you expect that, you know, when your child dies, then the MP must provide mini meal. That's his job, you know. Yes, that's what our people think, sure. you know. So civic education must be enhanced, you know, both on the side of the leaders and the people. Then, you know, parliamentarians need to understand that their job is rarely in parliament. Their job is with the people, you know. Spend your time, your five years with the people. The people have called you to say, we want you on the ground, you know. But, you know, our parliamentarians and all this honorable kind of thing, mm. it gets to their head, you know, and they are busy enjoying champagne, mm. you know. And their uh, constituencies are not, you know, uh, they don't know what is happening. Mm. You need to understand what is happening to the least person in your constituents. Mm. That is why you have that five years, you know. So for me, I would love to see walking parliamentarians, mm. you know. Parliamentarians, that will be, you know, if it's Mandevu MP, we want to see you in Mandevu, you know, every other couple of days at least, you know. You know, not you are a parliamentarian, you are on holiday, you know. We had mayors, you know, who were on holiday while, you know, you know, sewers were blocking and things like that. You know, so, like I said, integrity is what we need to begin to cultivate now, mm. you know. So, uh, all these uh, issues seem to point, uh, to point us to one direction. Mm. We need to mend our country. Mm. Many of the challenges that our people are facing out there, uh, if you, you know, toured almost the whole country, and uh, the challenges that our people are facing, 
uh, similar to those challenges that are, uh, maybe the people in uh, uh, Kaputa are facing, the people in Monze are facing. It's the issue to do with the water. You know, they want to have access to clean uh, drinking water as well. The issue of uh, health, access to health facilities as well has been a quite a pathetic in this country. That's uh, 57 years after independence. We are still struggling. Mm. Our people still die on their way to the hospitals or mm. clinics and the likes. And yet we've had successful governments that have come in uh, promising the similar and the same, you know, campaign mm. promises. But we have achieved little. I don't want to sound so, you know, uh, disrespectful to our leaders mm. by saying we have achieved nothing, but we have achieved li little. No, you're absolutely right. You know, mm. what, what is causing us to be talking about the same issue here and there? It's, uh, I think it comes down to selfishness, mm. you know. Once leaders become selfish, you know, then they don't, they, there's no, nothing for the people, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know. If we shared opportunities, yeah. you know, I've, I'm, I've been fortunate, you know, to, to have uh, traversed our country, yeah. you know, I've been to some of the most poor uh, districts yeah. in the country, yeah. you know, a district like Shangombo, yeah. you know, you know, some of the needs there are very simple needs, my brother. Sure. You know, and very specific. Yes. Yeah. Very simple needs, yeah. whereby you know, uh, those people who are saying two two million kwacha is change, mm. you know, for shopping. Yeah. You know, they could have you know improved the lives of those people. Mm. So what we are saying is that we need to fight inequality. You know, because once there is inequality in the distribution of national wealth. You know, then you begin to see other people have their farms developed, mm. <laughs> you know, while, you know, other people cannot even get capital yeah. to, to start a contemporary, mm. you know. So the, the gap between the rich and the poor mm. needs to be narrowed. And it all points to equity and equality, mm. you know. We, you know, if... A person in Lusaka, if a tarmac mm. is good for a person in Lusaka, yeah. then it should be good for a person in Shangombo, mm. in Zambezi, you know. If a university is good for the children in Lusaka, you know, then it should be good for the children in Kaputa, mm. you know. It's as simple as that because we are all Zambians. And that is why you see that... Uh, uh, even issues, for example, like the Barossa issue, mm. <laughs> you know, it becomes an issue because there has been no equity, there has been no equality in distribution of national wealth, you know, whereby you have certain provinces, mm. you know, that are developing faster than other provinces, mm. Mm. you know, that, you know, we, opportunities are centered, mm. you know, in a couple of towns. You know, even in Chipata today, you don't get the same opportunities that you will find in Lusaka. Mm. That is why you see that all the musicians in Indola have come to Lusaka now. Mm. You see? <laughs> because <laughs> that is where opportunities are. So yeah. we need to take opportunities across the country. Right. You know, and that way, you know, people will not complain to say, no, we have to go to Lusaka to look for jobs. Mm. You know, they come and they become squatters. You know, they become illegal settlers. Mm. You know, you, they, they pump each other in the townships, you know, mm. while, you know, there can be, you know, the same opportunities, uh, you know, in our rural areas. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about uh, the fight against uh, corruption. Once again, it's uh, another a critical subject that uh, really we can't relent as a country, you know, uh, from talking about it mm. or fighting against the vice. I did, uh, did, I did mention to you that uh, uh, the later president, uh, our first Republican president, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, he did try by all means to fight the uh, corruption sketch. Mm. You know, but uh, well, even now we are still talking about it. Others 
are telling us to say possibly Manawasa was much better. Mm. He was very serious in the mm. fight against corruption. Uh, we are still singing about it. It came to the leadership of uh, late Frederick Titus Jacob Chilula as mm. well. Mm. You know, like you've mentioned, that the uh, corruption allegations became very rife at that moment, in which when he left power himself, he was a subject of, of, of investigations, mm. you know, uh, in which the immunity, you know, were stripped off. At some point, again, uh, we, we saw him or the country attempting to go and try him before the International Court of Justice, mm. which he refused because, according to him, he believed in the um, local or the eternal sovereignty of institutions. Our law, yeah. Exactly. Mm. You know, but the build up of my question doesn't matter. It could be relevant to your ears. But my question is what is it that we have achieved, even if on the probe of Dr. Uh, FTJ? He spent about years in court, mm. spending taxpayers' money, mm. paying lawyers and the likes, the state. Yes. The results were equal to zero. For me, I've always said this, that, uh, you know, once public institutions are hijacked, yeah. you know, especially by politicians, then you create these cartels now, you know, where, you know, uh, People of interest, for example, are uh, able to be cleansed in the River Jordan in the name of uh, ACC. Mm. Because that is where you go to be cleansed, River Jordan. Mm. You know, they just go there, they are summoned, and our courts, you know, do the needful and do the acquittals. Mm. You know, yet when you get back to the figures in the Auditor General's report, Financial Intelligence Center reports, you find that the money is missing. Yeah. Ah, you know? Mm. So who has gotten the money? <laughs> you know, why are they not behind bars? You know? Why do you have simple uh, they find a boy smoking marijuana like mm. this, like a small thing. Yeah. And he's there for three years. Yeah. You know? While the people who are stealing people's lives, you know, sometimes are being called honorable. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, they are so much respected. So we need, you know, the fight against corruption cannot work, first of all, if uh, the institutions are dead, you know. Uh, and that is why, you know, institutions like the ACC, for example, mm. they have a job to do to bring back, you know, the, their integrity, mm. you know, because they've lost integrity in the eyes of the public. Mm. The public has lost faith in the police, for example, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You saw, you know, how, you know, I, I, a, a simple uh, people can go and attack our largest police station, you know? Because, you know, who would want to stand up to a political party cadre? You know, so all these things, you know, <laughs> As long as the institutions are dead, the fight against corruption mm. will just be on paper. You know, it has to be seen to be done. And for me, I would want to pose a challenge to mm. this government to say for the first time in Zambia's history, <laughs> or in the recent history, I may be mistaken, mm. let us see, you know, uh, figures of misappropriation of public funds reduce, right. you know or disappear completely, you know, because let us put honest controlling officers there, mm. you know, because, and you know, my brother, they say, the, the irony about this is that the theft, it's massive theft, it's, it's in billions, but you know, they'll give it terms like, you know, late payment, you know, uh, this and that, all these technical economic terms. No, they are criminals, you know. You have criminals in government, and that is why the Auditor General's report reflects, you know, that money has been stolen. So you have criminals, you have thieves there, and you need to weed out these thieves. And as long as there is no punishment mm. for corruption, ah, it will be a song, you know. Let there be examples. You know, right. as long as there is no clear example to say we have set a precedent that a leader who steals from the public mm. is going to jail and for a very long time, you mm. know, 
and they will lose their assets. They will go to the public or to the museum mm. or to orphans, you know. Then people are going to fear public resources. People don't fear, leaders don't fear public resources. You know, they don't. They don't fear public institutions. They don't respect, you know. So once we get rid of, oh, it's, it becomes a cartel, like I said. Mm -hmm. And once this cartel is dismantled, then you may begin to see a same kind of uh, governance and the, uh, and, the, and the proper fight against corruption. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's squeeze in uh, the remaining 10 minutes now. Um, I hope now we are going to be fast in terms of uh, settling these questions that I have for you. The issue of, uh, you know, job creation. I want you to uh, just speak on behalf of the young people. We are into the new Dawn administration, which has promised a lot to the young people, talking about the economy, uh, remedying the economy, talking mm -hmm. about uh, creating jobs for young people, and also, you know, giving empowerment or sustainable empowerments to the young people. Mm -hmm. You know, do you think this agenda is yet to be achieved under the administration of President Hakainde Hichdema? Answer that within a very, minute. Very quickly, you know, young people must not wait for government, first of all. Right. Yes. Why? <laughs> Why? What? Is government your father or... No. Young people must begin to create opportunities for themselves. You know, if you start a contemba today, you know, what you must expect is that somebody maybe in government will clean the environment for you or, you know, yeah. and I'm talking about economically, yeah, you sure. know, business-wise, mm. you know, they uh, create... Uh, maybe they support you. Yes, they support, you know, so that when you fail, you fail on your own. Mm. This idea, and that is why we have so many casinos, you know, people uh, want, f young people are getting used to free things. To get in pay. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's not going to happen now. The country is in a mess, you know, so you're not going to see the fruits of a good country anytime soon. So that, that reality must sink into the young people now. Mm -hmm. Let them get on the bike, let them get on the job. Whatever simple jobs you get, as long as you get an income, you know, start on your own. Government has just introduced a new ministry. Uh, which is the Minister of uh, Small, Medium and Enterprises. You know, and I bring this question uh, because you are an artist, you know, who has been in this country, uh, you know, as a pioneer of Zambian music or Zambian arts in general, besides your activism. You know, I want you to speak on behalf of uh, the artists out there. How do you want government really to realize the potential that people like you and uh, well, I should make mention that including your daughter as well, who is into music, as mm. well as your, your wife, mm. you know, as among others, how can government really, you know, consider the plights of uh, you, the musicians, and the artists in general, the comedians mm. we have today? Well, for me, first of all, I want to say that uh, we have... You know, professional artists in this country have rarely depended on uh, government. Right. And so it's mainly for the young artists out there, the budding artists, mm. who, you know, need support in terms of, you know, space, mm. you know, in terms of uh, where they can produce their work, and marketing, you know, in terms of how they can be marketable, you know. So it's a business. And now that we have a businessman as president, yeah. I hope he can be able, him and his team can be able to realize that art mm. is a business. You know, it can be part of the economy mm. if they want, you know. So uh, I'm just taken aback because there hasn't been any, any clear cut, you know, way in which uh, uh, the UPND Festival. Uh, I even in their campaign promises or in the president's speech or how they plan to sustain or revitalize the arts sector, the creative sector. Mm. So I think there is need for a lot of support from the artists themselves there, you know, to government in terms of policy direction mm. because a lot needs to be changed. Our National Arts Council, you know, needs to be looked at you know, our uh, policies, the different cultural policies, you know. So 
it's it's uh, even the ministry itself mm. you know the arts in the ministry of tourism yeah. and arts they even forget sometimes that is why even on the news why they just say minister of tourism or the minister of tourism is here because it's a very small negligible yes so so we you know let them just create a good environment for us you know we are going to make our own money mm. Mm. you you mentioned something very critical for me uh that's the how or how long should it take for a leader or a true leader a visionary leader can be judged and according to you you did mention that even five years is enough for one to be judged as a visionary leader mm -hmm. and i do agree with you because we've had examples of uh, you know the later uh, president of south africa nelson mandela yes who spent years and years in prison for 27 years by the time he came out of prison he only ruled the country for less than f five years yes and he gave up yes but still more the dividends or the fruits have been felt even today you know but w w what's the appetite of um, some of lead of our leaders in africa of wanting to cling to power because it's like be just because the constitution tells you mm -hmm. that uh, when you are you, uh, a president of uh, maybe a uh, party z you are going to you, you you've got 10 years mm -hmm. you know tenure for you to govern the country and hence some of them they tend to forget that they they can still perform miracles within uh, five years mm. once that five years term of office comes to an end they begin to lobby for another one even when that 10 years mm. comes to uh, comes to an end mm -hmm. they still want further addition to that going beyond the constitution mm. when we've got examples like uh, what happened in in tanzania for example we had uh, people like uh, you know julius kambaragi nyerere that after ruling uh, the country they decided to retire We've got people like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jakaya Ambisho, uh, Mauricio Kukwete, Kukwete, as well he ruled, and he went to stay home, you know, among them. What is it that we still want that appetite of wanting to govern beyond the stipulated period of time? It's, uh, you know, it's the greed I talked about. Mm. Once people test that power, they can't imagine you know, staying in their ordinary home again. You know, wachoka am state house. Nachoka zone. You know, for real. I'm, I'm out. Ah. You know, and so, you know, that is why you see some of them, they change constitutions. Yeah. I mean, people like Museveni, for example. Yeah. You know, I mean, what more do they want? Mm. You know? I mean, what, what, what is to what, him, what, he says, uh, he's the person that knows the, you know, the challenges that young people are facing because most of those young people and you in see, Uganda, that is why they have grown up or they grew up rather than his face. That is why the young people lose respect, right? Because even in a family setup, there comes a time when, as a father, hmm. you are you should be able to let your sons drive the family vehicle. Yeah. Yes, go and do errands. You know, for me, like now, my children do my finances, you know, they do, you know, I spend more time, you know, digging in my garden, you know, because you need, you, you just need to understand that, you know, it's a baton, you know, leadership is a baton mm. which you need to pass on. And once you don't pass on, mm. you know, the countries that have failed to pass it on, you know, most of the countries that have failed to pass on, you've mm. seen how degraded they've become. Right. Yeah. Michael Zulu, we have to end, but allow me to end on a lighter note. Sure. How old is your hair, your dread? Well, <laughs> I, I, I think it's as old as I look. It's, wow. uh, yeah, it should be over a couple of decades now. Wow. Yes. Right. But, uh, you know, we have uh, people with uh, locks that are reaching the ground in, in the country. Right. Yes. So maybe you need to bring the Rasta community onto the show. We have to do that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for coming, uh, Mr. Zulu. We hope to engage you uh, in the future. Thank you so much, IP. I'm humbled. All right. So we end our discussion here. Of course, uh, my guest on the program has been uh, Michael Zulu, of course, uh, uh, one of the people, or should I say, a governance activist, 
we hope to bring him back and allow me to appreciate my camera person in the studio uh, obvious kapunda and also upstairs uh, uh, of course we've got now you know a lady who has been working tirelessly the whole day we appreciate you as well uh, to you the people of zambia i believe that mr zulu has managed to answer all the questions and remember like he's mentioned that uh, you or as a country we are not successful not until we are successful and that only be done through togetherness may god bless zambia may god bless mother africa good night Thank you.